Hi, I'm Jen with Spectre Baby USA, and it is Wednesday, live question and answer time. Today, we are going to be having an open discussion. So what that means is, is that we welcome your questions surrounding anything that has to do with breastfeeding or pumping. It's really important that we have our mom our moms and parents to provide us feedback as to what's important to you and what it is that you need to discuss. So along those lines, what we did this last week is we surveyed our moms within our Facebook mom group. Hi. <laughs> and basically we used that information to know what topic to cover, what topic to cover today. And that's how we came about with the open discussion. So please uh, bring your questions and we will answer them to the best of our ability today. Again, this is an open discussion, so bring your questions and we will answer those live today. Let's cover a couple things that have happened this week in the news world of breastfeeding and lactation. I'm sure many of you have seen on our Facebook page, our Spectra, a certified Spectra IBCLC page, that it has come about this week that all 50 states in the United States now have legal protection for mothers to be able to breastfeed in public. And a lot of moms, Marie, I love it. She chimed in on Instagram saying that she's pumping with her S1 as she's watching. That's wonderful. So uh, it's now where mothers are protected against any legal action that can be taken against them for breastfeeding in public, which is huge. So a lot of moms say, well, wait a minute. It wasn't illegal to be breastfeeding. I think what they're referring to in this article is the fact that mothers could be harassed potentially by people that were watching uh, or you know, were just there in the proximity, or they could have been uh, taken legal action against for indecent exposure. So now all 50 states have protection against legal action that could be taken against a mother that is breastfeeding in public, which is huge. That's really huge. So yay, that's huge, yay. Another thing that has happened this week in the world of lactation and breastfeeding a study came out this week that showed how important it is for mothers who are pumping at work to be supported by their coworkers. It really showed that when mothers are supported while pumping at work <laughs> for their little one, that they are more successful, that they are able to pump more successfully, they have less doubts about their ability to do so, and they're able to pump for a longer duration or meeting their, their goals for breastfeeding and for pumping. So just keep that in mind, those of you that are pumping or that are pumping in the workplace, at school, at work. Uh, we applaud you. We are here to support you and know that it's really important that not only that you feel supported, but that you're supporting other people as well, other fellow mommies that are going to be pumping at work also. So those are some top things that have been happening this week in the world of breastfeeding and lactation. And if there's anything that you guys have heard about, we'd love to hear it also. So please chime in with some questions that you might have that we can answer live. We are here to be of help. Another thing that you might have heard and that we posted on our Facebook group is that Spectre Baby USA was able to donate 150 breast pumps to another country in need. So go ahead and check out that news story that's on our Facebook page, Spectre Baby USA. So that's a fantastic feel good story there. So what questions, mommies, do you have? What can we answer for you today during this time? We really want to make it so that it's personable to the information that you all need to know. You can always see the live question and answer uh, videos on our Facebook page for infinite amount of time. It's going to be posted there within the video section on our Facebook page. And we also have it on our Instagram story live for 24 hours after. Okay, so we do have Nina over on Instagram asked a question. 
She says, how often do I need to change my pump parts? And that's a great question because that comes up a lot. And we did cover uh, uh, different parts of that during our question and answer. I believe it was last week. Uh, but Nina, we really appreciate that question. So to answer that question, it really depends on whether you're exclusive pumping or pumping part-time, meaning pumping when you're at work or school. For the duckbill valves, it's important to change them every two months if you are exclusively pumping and every three months if you are part-time pumping. Now the backflow protectors, and I'll grab one so that you can see what we're talking about here. I'm going to grab my S9. So what we're talking about here would be the duckbill valve would be need to be changed every two months if you are exclusive pumping and every three months if you're part-time pumping. This backflow protector piece really should be changed about every three to four months. You want to change the duckbill valve or the backflow protector if you notice any loss of suction, if you see any damage or warping, and you can also reach out to us for troubleshooting assistance as well. So we'll make sure to uh, provide you that in infographic as well, Nina, so that you have that information. And again, this backflow protector does prevent against any bacteria or air passing from the mother that is pumping into the pump motor to ensure that it's a nice closed valve system pump so that it's nice and hygienic. So Diana asked, uh, will my S2 have the same suction if I use it with a battery pack? I need it for car rides. So that's a great question, Diana, and I know a lot of moms bring that up. And they, especially within our Facebook group, there are some recommendations as to I've used this with my breast pump and this is what I would, I would recommend. We cannot necessarily endorse or guarantee the, the compatibility um, as well as the pumping strength of using a battery pack. But what I will say is that as long as it is power compatible, so with an S2, as long as the battery pack is compatible with a 12 volt power, you should, uh, you should have the same results as you would if you used a 12 volt car adapter or if it was actually being plugged in. So hopefully that is helpful. If you do happen to utilize a compatible battery pack, Diana, please let us know and provide your feedback because we always think that's important. Absolutely. So Heather, you're, you're welcome. She said, uh, good to know. Thanks for that info. You are welcome. You're welcome. So Joy says, um, hi, good morning. Good morning. I just barely got to work. And my question is, how often should I pump at work? I work an eight hour shift. So Joy, that's a great question. And it comes up a lot. And especially uh, as a mother of four and having to return to work when all of them were about two weeks old, I understand. The biggest thing you need to look at is that you do not want your milk supply to be compromised. So with that in mind, you really need to be pumping and removing milk at the same frequency as baby would be nursing at breast. So if baby is, is young, is still under that six month period that their sole source of nutrition is mother's milk, you still should be really looking to be breastfeeding or pumping about eight to 12 times a day, right? So you really wanna be pumping about the same amount of time because you wanna be mimicking if baby was at breast. Along that same breath though, you do not want to exceed three to four hours without the removal of milk because at that point it's actually compromising your hormonal, your hormonal uh, levels. Basically those nice little hormones that help produce the breast milk, that actually can co start to compromise those when it's longer than three to four hours. So try not to exceed three to four hours. And if you want to, what you can do is you can direct message us and we can talk about your exact work schedule, what your environment is and how we can develop a pump plan for you. Okay, so thank you for that question, Joy, and hopefully that's helpful. Okay, uh, and we do have some sample pumping plans that we'll make sure to provide also, but it's always important to not give a cookie cutter answer outside of what some, some great guidelines would be based on research and that we can look at specific to what your needs are. So Shannon over here on Facebook says, I chose a Spectra S2 and it arrived on Monday. Yay! So she's due December 3rd. That's awesome. That's incredible. Congratulations. That's around my due dates. Mine's 1130. So <laughs> our fall babies, right? Do I need to buy any extra parts? So Shannon, I would highly recommend that you hold off on pumping unless you're planning to exclusively pump. 
hold off on pumping until about three to four weeks of, of returning to work or school, or at least four weeks of age. So why we say that is because you really want those, those hormones to regulate, which happens about four to six weeks postpartum. And that's really when your milk supply starts to really get a good establishment. It, it's a good foundation. So you really don't want to be adding in a lot of stuff during that time. You're already going to be <laughs> overwhelmed with a new baby and changing diapers and rocking and singing and nursing. And there's so much going on that you really don't need to be adding something else into the mix if you don't have to. But when you do need to start pumping and when you're returning to work or school, having extra pump parts can be extremely helpful. So having extra duckbill valves. So we talked about that little white piece down there. Having extra ones, you do need to replace that every two to three months, depending on if you're exclusive or part-time pumping. But having extra parts can be really helpful. Having extra duckbill valves, having extra collection bottles, having extra backflow protectors, because there's gonna be that time where you're out and about or at work and you have forgotten a duckbill valve or you know some some part is just not in there <laughs> you're scrambling because you need to be pumping so it's always good to keep some extra parts and check with your insurance company to see if they cover additional accessories as well so that you're not having to come out of pocket because there's already a lot of expenses with a new baby but congratulations so let's go back up here um, let's see here, just to make sure. So Marie over on Instagram says, what's the difference between the S9 and the S1? So this is the S9 and it's, it's very small and portable. It's about a half a pound and it does have an internal battery. So you can charge it up to four hours at a time and you don't want to exceed charging it for longer than four hours, just like the S1. It is quiet, just like the S1, but there is less customization in the cycles within the expression mode. So what that means is with the S1 and the S9, and as well as the S2, all of those have a static cycle of 70 in massage mode, basically otherwise known as letdown mode. So really, really fast, just like baby would at breast to help let down that milk. And once the milk starts flowing, then you switch to the expression mode, which allows for you to customize what cycle is gonna work best for you. So it's a slower cycle, um, just like to mimic baby at breast, a slower suckle, a slower cycle during that expression mode. So the difference, the biggest difference between the S1 and the S9 is not only the size, uh, however, with the S9, there is less customization within the expression mode of the cycles. So the S9 has a set cycle of 46 um, an expression. The vacuum is variable. So that's the strength. That's how hard it's sucking. The vacuum is still variable, just like in the S1 and in the S9. However, within the expression mode, the cycles are less variable for the S9. So hopefully that answers your question. All right, so let's go back over here to Facebook and see what other questions we have. Heather asks, how do you wean? I'm down to two pumps a day and still producing 60 to 80 ounces a day. Wow, <laughs> Heather, that is amazing. There's probably so many of us moms here that are pretty jealous, including myself. That is amazing. So Heather, it has to be a really gradual process. And there are some really great resources out there for weaning. And it really depends on the age of the baby. It depends on, um, in other words, how far you are away from the birth, the months, weeks postpartum, as to what the best approach may or may not be for you, and then how, how often were you breastfeeding or pumping. And so all of those factors play into how long it takes to wean and what the best approach could be. So again, it might be a good idea to direct message us or private message us so that we can look at specifics to you. Uh, but in generalization, a general idea is a good way, a good rule of thumb would be don't offer, don't refuse. And that comes a lot from the Leche League mentality, meaning don't say no if baby wants to be nursing, uh, but don't, don't offer the breast. Hey, you want to nurse? Because you're really looking for that gradual weaning off. Now, if you're down to two pumps a day, I'm, I'm not certain if that means that you are 
not offering breast and just pumping. And if that is the case, what you can do is gradually decrease the time that you're pumping each time. So for example, for one or two days, maybe slicing off a little bit of the minutes. So if you're pumping 20 minutes, start trying to go to 17 minutes or 15 minutes for one pump. For one pumping session and then after a day or two do the same thing for both pumping sessions and really gradually decreasing that pumping time and then once you start doing that you can actually start spreading out the time in between the pumping and eventually cutting out one pumping down to one pumping a day so it's kind of a gradual process and it really also is dependent on you too so let's talk about specifics to you if that is possible so reach out to us we on face you can direct message on instagram and then on facebook you can send a private message to our spectra certified ibclc page and we can assist you there as also so emily asks what is the best way to incorporate pumping and to breastfeeding to help supply store extra milk expecting baby number two congratulations emily and was not successful with breastfeeding and pumping with my daughter i felt like i wasn't getting a good supply any tips um, are much appreciated i would love to give this baby nothing but mommy's milk congratulations on that goal that's awesome and i will highly emphasize that it's amazing that you are that you're desiring to go, to go down that road again because it's so important to keep in mind that every experience is very different and every baby is very different so just because you may or may not have been successful previously does not mean that you won't be successful now so that's awesome Emily what I would highly recommend is surround yourself with successful pumping and nursing moms okay whether it's a local support group we have Facebook groups that you can join also and surround yourself with mommies that you can go to for support and guidance that have been in your shoes it's so important that you have that as an option so you can do that virtually we have Facebook groups uh, that you can join if you go to our Facebook page they're linked there and you can also go to maybe local La Leche League or, or mother's groups in your area. And I would highly recommend that that, that that would be a good place for you to start. And the other part of that is, is making sure that you're educating yourself and you're developing a, a, a guideline for what, you, what your goals are. So if you're wanting to only supply mommy's milk, look at some recommendations as to what can help with that. So for example, after baby is born, not using artificial teeth, artificial nipples or pacifiers, offering the breast unrestricted, feeding on demand is very important. A lot of skin to skin is very important because all of those steps help to reinforce breastfeeding, help to keep baby there at breast help to establish a good milk supply, and it's really important to get off to a great start and feel comfortable with it. But also, it's surrounding yourself with individuals that can be supportive, so that's really important. So let's go back to Instagram. I frequently notice condensation in my backflow protectors. Uh, why does this happen, and will it compromise my milk if I pump with it this way? So what I'm guessing would be is that your question has to do with getting condensation right here. That would be this smaller portion of this backflow protector. And that can happen because mother's milk is very warm, okay? It's usually about the temperature of 98.6, the, the temperature of the human body. Um, so that can cause condensation. And another thing that could happen also is if the uh, there is a splash guard there, and it's a little bit difficult to see, but there is a splash guard that helps to prevent the milk from going into the backflow protector. But if your flange is either too large or you have an overactive letdown, that can cause some milk to get into the smaller portion of the backflow protector. And it can also contribute to some of that condensation. So check your flange size. Make sure that your backflow protector and your flange are nice and dry when you're using it. And if it just is condensation because it's the milk is warm, then there should not be any issue because it's not going to pass through this backflow protector because this is a closed valve system. So it's going to protect anything from going from here into this backflow protector and it will prevent anything from going here past that middle portion, the white membrane, into the tubing or to the motor.
Okay, so absolutely. To answer your, your question there, Rebecca, is that even though you are noticing condensation, it really should not inhibit the ability to effectively extract the milk from your breast. And if you're noticing any, any change in suction or anything like that, you can always stop the pumping session and take this portion off, just gently twist it, and really taking a, a clean paper towel, take this apart, and taking a clean paper towel to dry this area. But speaking from personal experience with pumping with the Spectre Pump, I do get condensation, and I have noticed that it, it had nothing to do with an improper flange uh, sizing, and it had nothing to do with an overactive letdown, let me tell you that part. <laughs> um, it just had to do with that it was warm. And so that was, I just continued to pump. I didn't notice any difference in suction or effectiveness. So hopefully that answers your question there. But thank you for the question. So let's see. Uh, uh, let's see. Melanie has a question on Instagram. She says, how much milk is needed per bottle for a three-month-old 12 pounds? So this is a good question, and a lot of moms ask, so they need to know, uh, how, do, how much should I be storing at a time? How much should I be offering at a time? Uh, you know, what, what questions that surround that have a lot to do with what's being offered to baby? So if baby is either exclusively breastfeeding or exclusively receiving express breast milk, whatever the case is, if the baby is exposed to getting express breast milk uh, via a collection bottle, then it's really important to use what's called pace feeding. So Melanie, I would also look at not just how much you're offering, but how you're offering. So using a slow flow nipple is really important because you don't want the speed to be too fast because a lot of times with using a bottle when you're feeding a baby is that if you tip it upside down, you'll notice that it will just continue to drip. So it's very different than the feeding process at breast, whereas they really have to work to get that milk out every single suck, whereas with a bottle, it will continually drip. And so a lot of times that can contribute to them ingesting a lot more than they would actually need because it's a lot different in how they eat. So to go back to your question as to how much should be offered in each bottle, you really should be looking at, they probably nutritionally wise about 27 to 32-ish ounces a day. And so a lot of times another way to look at that would be approximately 2.7 ounces per pound per day, somewhere around there. Then that's just off the top of my head there. But I mean, really between the ages of six to zero, zero months to six months, and even zero months to 12 months, their nutritional needs and how much they actually need in a bottle per feeding should not change. So if it's 27 to about 32 ounces in a 24 hour period, if you divide that up into how many times they're eating per day, that should tell you about how much you should need in each, for each feeding. Because the nutritional needs really should not be increasing during that time from even the three month uh, age through six months, et cetera, uh, should not change that much. So hopefully that's helpful to you because a lot of moms think that they need to go from offering three or four ounces at a time to, which is, you know, that's about the average ingestion. That's about the average feeding for a baby at that age would be three to four ounces at a feed. So hopefully that's a good gauge for you. But a lot of moms think they have to go from that to eight ounces at a time, and that's just not accurate. So that's really not what baby will need. And again, a lot of that has to do with the fact that they will ingest a lot more um, by the bottle than they actually do need nutrition wise. So um, it's kind of that mentality of sitting at a buffet, right? And if you're, if it's there and it's available and it's easy to eat, then you're more likely to eat more, um, whether you need it or not. So um, hopefully that, that helps there. Thank you for the question. We appreciate it. So um, Melanie, she asked, well, can we talk about pace feeding? And sure, absolutely. I think it's so important that moms know about that. And we'll, we'll provide you a good resource too. So basically think of pace bottle feeding as when a baby is at breast, it's more of a suck, suck, swallow. Okay, so with pace bottle feeding, you really should think of that same mentality. So instead of offering... Instead of, well, let's see here. Let me move this over here. So instead of offering the bottle like this, which a lot of moms I do, and I see it a lot, it drives me crazy because I'm like, no, don't do that. 
having the bottle horizontal so that you actually see the milk level more horizontal is really, really important. And moms will always say, they'll be like, but wait a minute, Jen, like the milk is horizontal in the nipple. It's not filling the whole nipple up. Won't that give them air? Well, the reality is, is that they're going to be getting air, whether they're breathing um, at breast or whether they're breathing when they're eating. But the air is, is more so in how fast they're eating than how that milk is actually horizontal. So that, not, that does not necessarily provide uh, credence towards that belief that it's going to provide a lot more air ingestion. It actually will help because it slows down uh, how quickly that they're ingesting and it mimics more of that suck, suck, swallow and really going slowly. So, you know, taking the bottle out of the baby's mouth and allowing them to really kind of swallow and, and think and breathe, right? And then allow them to tell you, okay, wait, I'm, I want more. And then offering it again in a horizontal manner. So there is more so involved in this, but we'll provide that resource to you. And you can even Google just paste bottle feeding, and there's a lot of great PDFs out there that provide some great graphics and, and visualizations and step-by-step -step tips. And, and there's even some great ones out there for child care centers, because that is a big thing too, is that parents go, oh my gosh, I'm told that my baby's taking five, six, seven, eight ounces at a time. What's going on? And a lot of times it's this, it's being propped up, and the babies go, 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 and the more that they start to guzzle these large amounts of milk, then they start to really want and demand those large amounts of milk. So again, keep in mind in a more simplistic way, because I like to keep it simple, and then you seek out more information, keep the bottle horizontal. Allow the milk to be horizontal, okay? So instead of thinking like this, you really want the bottle to be horizontal, which yes, We'll have that the milk is, is horizontal. You'll see the milk there at level in the, in the actual uh, artificial nipple there. And you want the baby, think of this, suck, suck, swallow. Suck, suck, swallow. Allow the baby to regulate. Use a slow flow nipple. And hopefully that's helpful. Let us know if you want some more information. And you can, again, even Google Pace Bottle Feeding. There's some great resources out there. I love to keep it simple, give you little tidbits. And then you can ask for more information if you would like that. And also looking it up for yourself so that you really feel empowered about what, what resources you're finding is really important also. But we'll, we'll provide you some links and information too. Okay, so thank you for that question, Melanie. I appreciate it. So we have a question, Alyssa, over on, on Facebook says, does the three to four hour max just discussed include overnight? If baby sleeps through the night, is it best to get up and pump? So Alyssa, I would really look at the age of baby and how your milk supply is. So if it's prior to that six to eight week period, Absolutely. I would say yes, yes, yes. You need to be really sticking with that, you know, eight to 12 um, times a day pumping or breastfeeding to really get that good foundation for your milk supply. If baby is three, four, five, six months old, it may or may not really inhibit your milk supply. And you really have to look at all the factors that are involved in that. I will say though, that the more frequently that you go, um, and it's more so closer to the four hour point in a general speaking, but the more frequently that you're going that long without removing the milk, it can certainly impact your supply. So if it's possible, to maybe if baby's going down at 8 p.m. and you don't go to sleep until 11 p.m. and baby's waking up at whatever time, maybe pumping before you go to sleep would be a good measure so that you can still good, get a good stretch of sleep, but it's not allowing for a huge period of time where you're not removing milk. But that's a great question, Alyssa, because it's true, right? When baby starts sleeping through the night, it's like this revelation of our, our mommy, us mommies have. We're just like, oh my goodness, it's like a blessing and a curse. It's like, I can't believe it. And then we wake up and we're like, ow, ow, <laughs> why didn't you wake up to feed? Or why didn't I pump? So, you know, it's, it is, it's, it's a balancing act. And it always is going to be a balancing act with everything in, in the aspect of parenting. Um, but when it comes to breastfeeding and pumping specifically, it is best to really try to stick to no longer than four hours or more. Three to four hours is ideal. Um, so to answer your question, it's, you know, it really needs to be looked at more critically and, and balance it out as to what's going to be the best option for you.
So Mrs. Cece on Facebook says, I don't seem to respond to pumps no matter what I do. So that's not an uncommon thing for moms to say or to believe. And some moms really do have a challenge responding to breast pumps. And that's not uncommon in the sense that it takes some time to adjust to it. And the reason why is it's a machine, it's not a baby, and a lot of it has to do with that human connection and what is involved with human connection, human touch, which has a lot to do with the hormones that are involved with breastfeeding. So when we look at it from that respect, it's really important to do some what's called hands-on pumping. So Cece, what I would say is, have you done some breast massage before, during, and after pumping? Have you looked at some the hands-on pumping techniques? What about breast compressions uh, while you're pumping? What about you know some uh, some visualization uh, techniques? Have any of those been been tried or practiced while you're pumping or before pumping? Some studies uh, show that relaxation music or even music in general can be really helpful in uh, le the letdown of the milk and being being uh, more effective with your pumping experience. So there's a lot of things that you can do, uh, including a picture of baby, a video of baby, something that smells like baby. There's so many different things that you could do to help with the pumping experience and making it, it more successful and more enjoyable. Uh, however, what I would say, Cece, is just to keep trying and allow yourself the opportunity to continue to try and work with different things because having some, some time for yourself or date night or whatever the case might be, may be an option that you want to allow yourself. And if it's something that you really want to be working on, let us know how we can help with that also. Okay, but it's a great question. It is, it's wonderful. So what is the best way, Heather says, what is the best way to build a stash before returning to back to work without creating an overproduction? So that's a great question, Heather. And again, that goes back to, I would wait about two to three weeks before you go back to work or school uh, to worry about pumping. Because again, there's gonna be so much involved with a new baby and being a mom and being a parent that why add another thing to the mix if you don't need to right away? And a breast pump is a, is a ma magnificent device that you can use that's very helpful. And uh, However, with that, with that said, uh, if you can just enjoy the actual breastfeeding and nursing experience without adding that into the mix right away, that's really important also. So what I would recommend is adding a pumping session at first in the morning. So for example, your hormones are the highest in the early morning hours, basically very late evening and early morning hours is when your nice lactation hormones are peaking. So adding a pumping session after your morning nursing session can be very helpful because you're probably gonna yield the most during that time. And another thing that you could do is, is pumping about five to seven minutes after you breastfeed. So if it, you're adding a pumping session in the morning and then maybe later on adding a pumping session in the evening, you're pumping about five to seven minutes after you're nursing. So you don't have to worry about sitting there for the 15, 20 plus minutes to pump. So only about five to seven minutes is, is enough. And that will provide some good stimulation. It will provide a nice little stash that you can have in your freezer, but it, will, it won't necessarily trigger your body to be going into overproduction unless you are pumping pretty often uh, or you're pumping after every single nursing session, something of that nature, and that can truly contribute to that. So that's a great question. We appreciate you, you asking that. So let's go back over to Instagram. We say, uh, we have a question that says, should the duckbill valves be sterilized daily in a microwave steam bag? So that's a great question. And according to the CDC guidelines, they do recommend that you do sterilize on a consistent basis. And you can use the microwave steam bags to sterilize the duckbill valves. I just would highly recommend that you are using the proper amount of water in the microwave bags because you do not want the duckbill valves or backflow protectors or anything else of that nature to be warped, which can happen in, in variable heat uh, environments such as the dishwasher or a microwave steam bag. Um, and with a steam bag, it happens more so when you're not using the proper amount of water. So it would be a good measure to do so frequently. Uh, once, once a day, it would be a great measure to do. And making sure that when you take it out of the steam bag, 
that you're putting it to dry on either like a drying rack or more ideally would be some paper towels that are clean that are not used or an unused dish towel. So all of those would be great options. And we can also provide you the CDC guidelines for cleaning your breast pump and cleaning breast pump parts because that is on the newer side and it is really important that, to know that information also. So thank you for that question. So we have another question from Amy and it says, ever since I started to pump and giving my daughter the bottle, I noticed that my daughter no longer wants to latch and my milk has decreased. So she started to supplement. Any suggestions? So Amy, I would highly recommend that you reach out to us, uh, send a direct message so that we can look at the specifics of your situation. A lot of times that does happen if the baby is exposed very frequently to two bottles that are are, may or may not be like a slow flow and if pace feeding especially is not being practiced because again it's a very different suck and babies are more likely to ingest a lot more at a time and then sometimes are less uh, less wanting to or less willing to really work for it at breast and so depending on the age that that's that they're exposed to that the frequency and other factors can be involved with that what I would highly recommend is, is continuing to frequently express. So really working at it to express your milk, to remove milk as frequently as possible, really gearing towards that eight to 12 times a day would be ideal. Doing a lot of breast massage, doing a lot of breast compressions, even using some warm compresses on your breast before you pump can be very helpful. And really looking at that whatever is removed is what's going to be produced. So you really want to be continuing to remove. So every time that baby is offered a bottle, keep that in mind that you really need to be removing the milk also. Because whatever is removed is what you make. And if you're not removing it frequently, you're not signaling to your body that you need to be making that milk. So you please feel free to send us a direct message and we can really look at the specifics for you also so that we can give you more targeted information and advice, okay? So we have another question on Instagram that says, I noticed that my tubes fall from the holes on their own often. I only had the pump for about two months. Okay, so let's look at this. Um, are you referring to the coming off the backflow protector or from the actual pump itself? So whether it's an S9 or an S1 or an S2, it's really, I, if you're talking about whether it's coming from falling off here or it's coming off the backflow protector. So the first question I would ask is, have you boiled or sterilized or even put in the dishwasher um, the tubing? Because that has been, I've seen that a lot, that moms will say that it's coming off and any of those scenarios has happened. So they've taken the tubing and they put it in the dishwasher or a sterilization bag or they boiled it and it basically compromised the integrity of the tubing. And it's really not necessary to do that because nothing is going to be passing from the backflow protector through the tubing to the, to the pump. So there's no real need there to be boiling or sterilizing the tubing. So that would be one thing. Now the other part is, is that the accessories are covered for 90 days. So reach out to customer service and let us know. And if it's within that 90 days, it can be replaced. So let's look at how we can help you um, make that a better situation because you surely need that tubing to be pumping, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So we have a question. Uh, well, actually, Sarah uh, on Facebook says, I use the S9 to travel. Awesome, me too. Uh, and I use the S2 at home. Wonderful, beautiful, beautiful. So is it, Shannon asks, is it okay to pump the other side baby does not nurse on uh, to completion each time, or does that complicate supply? So Shannon, to be honest, uh, there's actually a lot of celebrities that have been in the news lately that you see pictures of them doing this, and it's gone it's gone pretty viral. It's kind of cool to see. I love watching it because our oldest is 15, so to see the difference between our 15 and now, it, there's been a lot of progress, and it's incredible. So you do notice that a lot of moms will be pumping on one side and nursing on the other, and especially it's helpful for babies that only take one breast at a feeding. 
Because if they're only taking one breast at a feeding and the mom's going to be going back to work or school, sometimes it's helpful to be pumping the other side to keep things a little bit equal, <laughs> right? Keep us for our comfort, but also to have a stash, a milk supply stash. It, so it can be very helpful to do that. So does it complicate supply? Not necessarily. Um, some moms do say that, um, you know, it, it can cause a little bit of an oversupply if they're pumping one side and then they pump the other side after nursing um, because it can overstimulate one breast versus another. But every mom is different. Every baby is different. So if that's something that works well for you, I would say go for it. Maybe try it. Try it for a day or so, maybe even just after one or during one nursing session and see how that goes. Um, you know, maybe not every time. It might be a little cumbersome to do that every time. But Shannon, see if it works for you, you know, uh, see how it goes. And we can always psych, uh, circle back and, and look at specifically to you uh, what other questions you have surrounding that. And we'll go from there. So I love that question. Thank you for asking. So Lana asked a question uh, over on Facebook, and she said, my pump fell off my sofa yesterday. Oh, no. Onto an area carpet, which is on top of tiles. Is the pump durable? Oh, my gosh. I would have cried. It's, uh, similar things have happened, though, to me. <laughs> I probably could tell some stories, too. I'm sure a lot of us could. Um, I'm so worried. I used it last night, and it worked fine. So Lana, keep in mind that we have a two-year warranty on the S1 and the S2. And the S9 has a one-year warranty. So if you start to notice any sort of weirdness with the pump, if it's not working as effectively, please reach out to us. And let's see what we can do to help troubleshoot um, and or replace it during that warranty time. So we're here to support you and let us know how we can help. Just the biggest thing I would say, Lana, is try not to worry. There's enough stuff that we worry about as moms and as parents that try not to worry if it's working fine then just take a breath and step back and just believe that it will be all good right you don't need another stressor in life but if you do have any um, concerns or you notice anything weird just reach out to our customer service and, and we'll be here to help uh, troubleshoot and see what we can do to support you okay uh, she Lana says I did cry yeah I would have too I would have too so uh, we have a comment over on Instagram it says it might help to bottle feed more slowly so the slower pace of breastfeeding isn't frustrating and yes that goes back to the pace bottle feeding and that's wonderful I love seeing the comments back and forth of between all these mommies that it's so helpful I love it so Diana on Instagram says my baby is six months old and is still drinking two to three ounces at a time. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. Yes, the same, same here with all four. I really kept that pace feeding even when they were away from me. And nutritionally speaking, there really is no need to be going up more than the three to four ounces max at a feeding, even if they're six months, seven months, a year. So keeping in mind that it's so important to use a slow flow nipple and pace feeding when we're bottle feeding. So I love it, Diana. Thank you for reinforcing that. She says, what can I do so she can drink more at a time? And again, you can, you can work towards doing more at a time, Diana. I would, I would recommend to try not to go more than the three to four ounces at a time, but also depending on what her needs are in terms of what she's, what she's demanding. So some babies want to eat more frequently, smaller meals and other babies want to eat more at a time but less frequently but keeping in mind too that we do want to reinforce a good metabolic speed um, a good metabolism for babies to set up them up for a good portion in life right so it's good to have smaller meals more frequently so um, so if she's six months old it definitely is that time where it would be recommended to start the complementary foods and she's in Diana's question is she barely started solids so milk is still her main source of food and that's good Diana that's not a bad thing because you still want the primary source of nutrition to for babies to be mother's milk for that first year of life so that's not a bad thing don't worry about that and again it's a lot of that is practice at first so for that first six months of life and once you hit six months and you start to introduce these complementary foods babies may just play at first and that's okay that's okay but you do want to be offering the breast or express breast milk first before you offer solids anyway so to encourage maybe eating some more would be exposing her to more so in other words um, you know when she's 
sleepy. She'll be more prone to nursing more uh, or ingesting more milk from the bottle at a time when she's just waking up from nap or when she's going down to nap. But you don't want to wait till she's too hungry or too frustrated because then she's just not willing to try anything new. Just like we are, right? If we're tired and cranky and we're just like, oh my goodness, get away from me. We, we have our limits too, just like babies do. So we can really look at more specifics too, Diana, if you want to direct message us and we can look at specifics for, for your little one there. It sounds like you're doing a great job and I really wouldn't worry too much about the exact quantity. Remember a lot of that has to do with quality too. So offering some good uh, nutrient dense foods, um, some good first foods and talking to your physician about what some good first foods offering to your little one would be. And there's some great information, some great evidence-based studies out there that you can look up too. Uh, but again, try not to stress out. And if you want to direct message us for specifics, please let us know and we're here to support you. Okay, so let's see what other questions we have on Instagram. And we say, uh, <laughs> so another mommy has chimed in and she says, yes, I've used a preemie nipple for my baby since day one. I love it, yes, 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 yes. I see way too much um, the media and marketing and so much is being pushed for moms. Not only is there way too much marketing out there that's against the Who Code, because we are a Who Code compliant company, uh, there's so much marketing and information out there that really pushes moms into thinking that they have to be using bottles and they have to be um, supplementing and they have to be using this type and that type. And they really forget to realize their own ability to feed baby without all these interventions. And so keeping that in mind is really important. And again, it's, you know, it's every mom and baby is so unique. So we're not here to criticize or judge any, any mom or their choices because that's, that's your choice and that's our choice. We can only do the best we can at the time and that's the best we can do. But it is also important to know what babies actually do need nutrition wise and what they need developmental wise and really looking at what the evidence shows. And that's also important, too, so that we have the right information um, to make an informed choice. And that's really important. So thank you for chiming in. We love that. We love it. We love the support that moms um, are giving each other. So another question on Instagram says, I'm having trouble getting my milk out with this pump and I just switched from another pump. Any tips? Yes, 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 yes. Join our, uh, if you're on Facebook, join our Facebook mom group because we have over 5,000 moms that are on there using just Spectra breast pumps. And a lot of them have sw switched from another brand pump. So going directly to moms for support is going to be a fantastic way to get not only one suggestion, but a lot of suggestions and a lot of help. And they're so fantastic at that. I love watching that because I'm an admin on there and I love watching what the moms ask and how they answer and support each other because it, there's no judgment. It's a no judgment zone, right? And all the moms are there to help. So yes, my biggest recommendation is go get some help from mommies that are in your shoes. Please, please, please go to our Facebook page, the Spectra Baby USA, and there is a Spectra Pumping Mom group that has over 5,000 moms in it and they're all using Spectra pumps and they're there to help each other. So go do that. That would be one of my top recommendations. But the other is play around with the pump, play around with the settings, do some good breast massage, breathe, relax, and realize that your body does have to adjust just like anything in life, adjusting to new shoes, wearing them in, right? Adjusting to new jeans, uh, whatever the case is, we have to learn to adjust and adapt. So just be patient, give it some time, play around with the settings, and most importantly, get support, get encouragement, go find some other mommies that are in your shoes and let's get you some help and support, okay? And if you don't find the answers and support that you need, just direct message us and we're here to help you. We're here to support you. So let's go back over to Facebook. We have a question from Ashley and she said, I just had my third baby and this is my second baby that I've used with the Spectra. Congratulations, Ashley, awesome. I love Spectra, but why uh, with around uh, 
sorry, why with uh, my kids around the third month, both times, my Spectre just decided that it would not suck anymore. Oh, goodness. I've reached out to customer service and they sent me a pump, but it doesn't work as effectively. Oh, that's frustrating. Now they said that they can't send another one until I send this one back. Uh, Ashley, what I would highly recommend is send us a private message on our Facebook page and let's see what we can do to really help with your situation. Um, it could be potentially, uh, depending on if it's, an, for example, if it's an S1, it could be if it's left in charging too long at a time because that can compromise the battery life. It could be that it is a a part replacement concern because if we're not replacing backflow protectors or duckbill valves uh, frequently enough, then it can affect the effectiveness, uh, losing suction of the pump. Um, but there's other factors that could be involved there too. And we wanna be here to support you because it's not it's not okay to not have a functioning pump. So the, our biggest concern is our moms and supporting our moms. So you can reach out to customer service by uh, private message on Facebook. You can send us an email to customer service at spectrababyusa.com. And you can also give us a call Monday through Friday, nine to five. And we'll make sure to provide all of that information to you. And you can go to spectrababyusa.com. But if you're on Facebook, just shoot us a message on Facebook. Uh, send us a private message to our Facebook page and let's see what we can do to support you because we want you to have a good functioning pump and a good a good experience with the pump. So please let us know. I appreciate you asking. Please let us know what we can do to help make the situation better for you. Okay. Um, and congratulations on your new little one. Congratulations. So Sarah on, on another Sarah on Facebook says, uh, why Spectra versus another name brand that I've used for the first two? I've got a, a few weeks before baby three is here and, and which Spectra? Okay, so that's kind of a loaded question because there's a lot of answers in my mind because I've used every brand on the market and I'm a mommy of four. So I speak from professional and personal experience. But when it comes to looking at what Spectra can offer versus other pumps, I would say, not only is it hospital strength, it's above hospital strength. Hospital strength is 250 milligrams of mercury of, of suction pressure or higher, and all of our pumps are that or higher, so we're hospital strength. The other part is all of our pumps are closed system pumps, so there is that barrier protection. So it prevents anything from going from where the mother is pumping and into the motor and back out. So it prevents any contamination to the mother, to the milk. Uh, and so that's important also. And then the customization of the settings. So with the S1 and the S2, for example, you can really customize if you're going to be pumping just on massage mode for the full pumping session or whether you want to go from massage to expression and expression to massage to help elicit another letdown. There's a lot of customization in the cycles as well. So with the S1 and the S2, you can choose, am I going to be on cycle 38 in expression or going to 54 because there's all these different cycle settings in between. So there's a lot of different customization. A lot of moms chime in that they love the cup holder on the back of the S1 and the S2. It's funny what I've seen uh, this week as to what's being held in those cup, those <laughs> cup holders in the back. I've seen coffee. I've seen milk. I've seen, uh, I don't know, I've seen a, a glass of wine. I've seen, you know, a pint of ice cream. I've seen M&Ms. I've seen all sorts of stuff. Uh, the other thing that I really enjoyed was the nightlight feature. I loved that, uh, especially being in Florida for, for the majority of my life. We just moved out of Florida, but uh, during a hurricane, for example, and the power went out, I used my S1 as the nightlight. So there's so many different areas. And again, join the Facebook mom group since you're on Facebook and ask other moms, ask what they, what they think and um, how that compares to other pumps they've tried. And get some candid feedback and some support and encouragement because that's so important. It really is. So let's cycle back to Instagram. So trying to conceive baby uh, says my supply dips during the week uh, before my period and during my period. I heard to take magnesium. Is this correct and how much? So it's very normal for milk supply to dip around the time of menstruation. Uh, usually about five to seven days ish, depending on the mom before it starts and usually during the time. And sometimes some moms have a little bit of a challenge about a day or so after, and that's normal. It's all hormonal. 
Now, in terms of taking supplements or medication, I would highly recommend speaking with your healthcare provider about that. Uh, as a lactation consultant, I can't recommend uh, or prescribe any particular supplement or medication. Um, we can discuss what the research says in terms of the safety level of supplements or medications, and we can look at the resources that are out there uh, regarding those supplements or medications. Um, specific to magnesium, there's not a lot of research that supports that, that it can help with uh, increasing supply during menstruation because a lot of that is hormonal. So really doing a lot of hands-on techniques can be more, more uh, conducive, more helpful than really taking anything else. But again, talk to your healthcare provider um, and also look on uh, for the information about hands-on pumping. So a lot of breast massage, a lot of breast compressions, um, a lot of things that really enable that human touch that's gonna really help peak your hormones during that time can be helpful. So let's go to another question that we have here on Instagram. Tanika says, my baby is nine months old and it seems like my supply is dwindling. How can I increase it? I'm not ready to stop this journey yet. Congratulations for making it nine months. That's amazing. I love it. So again, there's going to be times uh, during the nursing experience where our milk supply starts to plateau a little bit. And some moms might notice a little bit of a dip. And that is normal. And especially around that nine month age, a lot of that is that acrobatic nursing, right? Baby's feet in our face and they're flopping all around and they're distracted and they're, you know, ding dong ditch, right? They come and touch base for a few seconds and then they're off and they're off running. Um, and that's very normal. And you'll might even notice that around 10 months or so that they may only nurse once or twice a day. And that's very normal too. That's okay. So, Offer the breast frequently, um, especially if you are nursing. Continue to offer the breast frequently, Tanika. And another thing that you can do is if you are, when you are pumping, practice hands-on pumping. I cannot express that enough because it is so, so, so important. Human touch is so important to our hormone levels and our milk supply. So keeping that in mind is really important. Um, and if there's any specific questions that you have, we can look at that. So always send us a direct message on Instagram and we'll be there to support you. It's incredible. It is incredible that you've made it that, that far. We are here to support you. I love seeing that you're not done yet because uh, again, it is highly recommended that you exclusively breastfeed for six, the first six months and continue to breastfeed uh, with complementary foods added at six months through one year and then for as long as it is mutually uh, acceptable. So in other words, as long as it's mu mutually accepted for mom and baby to continue to nurse, the World Health Organization recommends for at least two years. So keep at it, Tanika. We're here to help you. <laughs> it's awesome. I love it. So... Uh, again, we address the question about uh, the, the period of dipping. So any tips on getting my supply back? I've been needing to supplement one to two times a day, um, and it's difficult to pump more than once at work. Okay, so I would really look at, have you talked to your HR department at work about needing time and space to pump? Because remember, there is the federal protection for the reasonable um, break time law that um, provides you the time, that provides uh, legal accommodations for time and space to pump at work. So keep that in mind too, that you are protected legally um, to have that time and space to pump at work. There are some exceptions um, if the company can show undue hardship, um, certain salaried employees, et cetera, but speak to your HR department and see how you can be supported at work because that's important, it is really important. So um, what I would recommend is looking at hands-on pumping also, okay? So again, we sincerely appreciate you guys spending time with us today. And if there's any further questions or concerns you have, please let us know. And again, we will see you next Wednesday at noon. Have a great day.